everyone, I'm Whitney and I post a new tutorial every week to help sewers of all skill levels learn new projects and techniques. This week I'm showing how to make a t-shirt quilt. Now I do already have one t-shirt quilt tutorial already on my YouTube channel and in that one I did a ton of math and figured out how to make every single t-shirt piece that was cut to all different sizes fit together perfectly so that I didn't have to include any filler fabrics. Um, for this video I'm showing how to make a t-shirt quilt that uses much less math. So all of you people who don't enjoy the math, this one's for you. Um, so very little math and then instead we are using filler fabric to um, use around all of the t-shirts that we are featuring. I have been collecting Minnie and Mickey Mouse shirts for several years now and since my youngest daughter loves Minnie Mouse so much I decided to use them to make a t-shirt quilt for her. They range in size from juniors small to adult 4x and I'm actually making this quilt to give her for her third birthday. I made sure all the shirts were pre-washed and then I started prepping them by cutting up the sides and separating the front from the back. Use a couple of rulers and a rotary cutter to cut around the shirt graphic. I tried to allow a two inch border around the design at this point. We will be trimming the shirt down a little bit later to its final size. grab some fusible interfacing. My go-to is the Pelon P44F and I will have some linked in the video description. Lay the shirt on the textured side of the interfacing and trim off the excess. Flip the two over and grab your iron. Set it to medium heat with steam. You want it hot enough to fuse the inner facing, but not too hot to damage the graphics on the shirts. Set the iron down for a few seconds, then lift and set down next to the first spot. Repeat until the entire shirt is fused. The inner facing gives the shirts a little structure and keeps them from stretching or warping while you're working with them. Grab your rollers and rotary cutter again and cut the shirt down to its final size. I like to cut mine so they have one inch of material outside the graphic on each side. Repeat each of these steps until all of your pieces are prepped. It goes faster if you do them kind of assembly line style, so all the cutting, then all the fusing, and then the trimming, instead of working on only one shirt at a time. At this point, I laid all of just the shirt pieces out on the floor to get a feel for how I wanted the layout to look. Um, it's good to try out a layout and um, you want to make sure that you have it as big as you want the finished quilt to be. Snap some pictures, then you can try out a different layout, snap some more pictures, and then that way if you decide you liked an earlier version better, you can refer back to those photos um, and it just helps out a lot and gives you another um, visual of how the quilt will turn out. So here is the design that I finally settled on and you'll notice there are a lot of gaps in between the shirts and that is where our filler fabric comes into play. I grabbed some graph paper and sketched out the t-shirt placement. This is not to scale, it's just a visual helper. And I also sectioned off how the filler fabric will actually fill in the gaps. It is really helpful to design your quilt top so it's sectioned into boxes or rows. Mine is designed to go together in three rows, and each row then breaks down into a few sections that can be pieced together. Now that I have a better idea of how many filler pieces I'll need, it's time to prep that fabric. I'm using a size 4X shirt and an extra large dress, plus a little scrap of other fabric for my filler pieces. I cut each piece of clothing open and cut all the seams off. Then I square up the sides and cut them into as large of rectangles as possible. Then fuse the same way as the t-shirt pieces earlier. I'm 
going to start piecing beginning with a square unit at the lower right. It doesn't matter where you start, this is just where I chose to. I grabbed filler pieces that were larger than needed to fill the open spaces. Each piece is laid right sides together with the piece next to it and sewn with a half inch seam allowance. Press each seam allowance to one side after sewing. Then I laid the sewn pieces back together to figure out how much needed to be trimmed off each. I decided that this unit should be 16 inches wide, so I cut both pieces 16 inches wide and trimmed off the excess at the top and bottom as well. The two pieces were laid back out in the correct orientation. Then they were laid right sides together and sewn to attach. Give it a press and the first unit is complete. On to the second unit. You don't have to piece them in order, just make sure you plan out what has to be sewn first to then attach to a larger piece. One important thing to note is since there is very little measuring going on, it's important to leave one section of each row that is untrimmed. This allows for a little bit of ease for adjustment to make sure all the rows are the same width at the end. For now, I'm just tucking the excess under the next piece until I know exactly what size to cut it to. Continue to add filler pieces and sew the sections together. This part is really fun because you can add larger filler pieces or break it up into even smaller sections depending on the look you prefer. I worked on different areas around the quilt instead of working down one row at a time, but you can do it however you like. I did want to pause right here and talk for just a minute about rotary cutting safety. It is so easy to get careless and get too comfortable with using a tool like a rotary cutter and end up um, with your hand too close to the blade and get hurt. And that's what happened on this particular day. I was not being careful and um, I ended up injuring my finger pretty badly and had to go to the emergency room. Um, so yeah, it was a very expensive lesson to learn. So please heed my advice and take precaution, be safe. There are even cut resistant gloves that you can wear to try to prevent an injury like this. I will be wearing mine from now on and I will actually link to the exact glove that I now wear when I use a rotary cutter um, down below in the video description. So anyway, back to the tutorial. After I got back from the hospital, I continued working on the quilt until it was in six pieces. I grabbed a tape measure to figure out what would be a good width for the quilt. Each row had a fully trimmed piece and one piece that had excess for adjusting. I wanted each row to add up to 50 inches, so I measured the width of the finished piece in each row and wrote those numbers down then subtracted each from 50 and that was the width that the other piece in the row needed to be cut down to. After everything is trimmed up, it's time to sew the rows together. You can really see the quilt coming together and see how it's going to look completed. This is when I get really excited about how the finished design will look. Then all that's left for the top is to sew the three rows together. Continue to press each seam from the back after it's sewn. At this point, you can decide how you want to finish this t-shirt quilt. You can finish it like a traditional quilt where you put a batting and, or you can finish it more like a blanket, which is my preferred method. Um, for this one, I actually had one t-shirt that had a graphic on the front and back that looked like the characters were busting through the shirt. So I saved that piece and I pieced it into some sweatshirt knit that I used for the backing. I laid it right sides together with the top, smoothing them out as much as possible. I used some curved safety pens to attach the two layers together. So 
sew around, leaving a small opening for turning. Remove the pens, trim off the excess material, and turn right sides out through the opening. Then top stitch all the way around to finish. While top stitching, smooth the fabric away from the seam so it has a nice finished look. The sweatshirt knit really gives this project a nice weight and feels so cozy. So there you have it. The finished quilt is so fun and turned out exactly how I wanted other than that trip to the hospital. Uh, but anyway, if you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to leave me a comment and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming tutorials. And until next time, happy sewing.